meeting of community board seven's uh, transportation committee. Um, we have a special presentation from Captain Malin. However, he's not here yet. So in the interim, we have um, the Manhattan Edge uh, presentation. And so we'll do that. And when um, when Captain Malin comes, we'll, we'll go ahead with that. Malin? No. OK. Both. Is there a screen? Oh, yeah, there's a screen. Can I ask you guys to? Melissa, you're going to do a presentation? Yeah. OK. Which computer? Oh, um, either one will work. Uh, you're connected. You need this oh, but yeah. That one works good. Do you have a thumb drive? OK. Do you need this? Did I open it? It's open. Okay, I'll get there. Sorry. Oh. So I'm going to be standing over Rich, the cookies. Can you give me my, uh, yeah. That takes a second. Oh, so of course, today is the day that decides to update itself. <laughs> That would be no, that's what we want next year. That got my attention. A Burbis Bell, right? Complete with mint juleps and. We wouldn't have to find the meeting. That's right. Short, but. But not memorable. That's right. Oh, um. Um, so you had to open the and then it, the thing she was sending was that's the one we normally use, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's an hour you'll never get back in your whole life. But we have some that's good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, okay, here we go. You've been here a long, uh, this has been a long day, which is why you brought snacks, or is yes, feeding people? Your, uh, and that's, is that the European fellow? They have a Sadly, a fair question. Oh, she's she's emerging. Yes. And how is she? Thank you. So she's up and walking. That's pretty great. <laughs> All right, folks. Let's let's. Um, Captain Man is three minutes away, so let's. Um, okay, I think we're ready. Well, let's see. Page up, page down. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Melissa Diaz. Um, I want to thank Andrew and Harold for having me here, as well as the rest of the Transportation Committee. I'm Director of Government Affairs at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, I've been at the museum for a brief amount of time, so if I haven't met you, please come up, say hello. Um, and let's chat about getting you to the museum for any one of our various events, including Manhattan Henge, which has been happening, um, I suppose, since 1600s in Manhattan, but realistically at the museum has been going on uh, since about 2010. So first and foremost, um, Manhattan Henge, the award was popularized by one of our astrophysicists, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Some of you may know him from his Twitter fame and television fame. Um, Manhattan occurs when the sun sets, aligns precisely with the grid of Manhattan, creating a radiant glow of light. A lot of photographs, a lot of people who are enthusiasts get really into this event. Um, and we notice that it happens twice a year. It happens in May and it happens in July. So this year we're celebrating Manhattan Henge on July 12th with an educational event at the museum, followed by a chance to see the sun set over the grid. Let's see the next one. 
As described, we start the evening with an educational event at the Hayden Planetarium. Um, the best viewing for people to see it would be far east of Manhattan. Um, the cross streets include 14th, 23rd, 42nd. You can actually experience Manhattan Henge from anywhere on the island, but this is the only event the museum does for this phenomenon. It's a two-part component. It starts with the educational programming, then people move over to the street to actually see the phenomenon in real life. That's more of our educational component. And we're requesting a street closure for 79th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam Avenue, just off the top of the hill so that people can see it to New Jersey. Since 2010, we've been hosting this event at the Hayden Planetarium, and it grows in popularity every year. As, a, as it's an educational event, there is a scientific component. Our scientists talk about what Manhattan Henge is, why it occurs, how this phenomenon is unique to Manhattan. It starts at 7 p.m. People start gathering in the museum at the six o'clock hour. The planetarium event ends at eight, which is why we request the street closure from 7.30 to 8.30. Peak sunset is about 8.15. Actual sunset is done by 8.27. We ask for the street closure because in the first few years of the event, we're building a presence and we noticed that people were going out into the street and it's kind of a rocky situation. We don't promote the street closure, nor do we charge people, none of that. So for a lot of people, it's an exciting time to be able to go out into the street and see this phenomenon happening. We saw that it was a problem though, getting people in the street and the sidewalks. Out of concern for our neighbors, we started asking for full street closure since 2012. And we're doing that today because we want to ensure the safety of our neighbors, but also so that everyone can experience this naturally occurring phenomenon uh, for free in their own neighborhoods. Uh, and for those who go to the museum's event, they can go right after. Ooh, the next one. As I described, you can see this from anywhere in Manhattan. So there's been some trouble in the rest of the city when you don't shut down the street, you get people in the street, you get enthusiasts. Um, you might recall the eclipse. I saw a lot of people making some very interesting choices during the eclipse. Um, usually, if you don't shut down the street, people will sort of filter out, and it could be a safety issue. Uh, we work really closely with the precinct to create barricades and to have two officers there, facilitating people in and out of the street, but also so that, similar to a fireworks show, when it's over, it's over. So they facilitate them out of the street as well. This is the 79th street closure that we've seen in the past. You might notice the barricades and people sort of in the middle of the street. We can go to the next one. And it's the same deal. We have seen that the as the event increases in popularity, people come, local people, whether it's you know Upper East Siders or from the rest of the city, like to come and see the event. Uh, but from what we know of, we are the only institution that does this in the city. Um, so we come to our neighbors asking for support of this street closure every year. I want to open it up for questions. If anyone has questions for me, start with the board. Of board course, members. please. Yes. Okay. So Melissa Diaz. All right. So I think we might have seen each other at some point, but wow, I've never like once seen like this. No, it looks like another planet though. As a thing. Yeah. Well, the beauty of it is there is Manhattan Hench twice a year but we do one educational event because we recognize how crazy this is. Is this, is this tonight? It's July 12th. Oh, July 12th. Yeah, it's July 12th. But there's one in May and there's one in July. We only do the event. Andrew, that means no SBS routes. Uh, we we reroute the M79 during this um, oh. this hour. Yes. All right. We're going to ask for this first. Of course. Uh, Rich, a question leading up to my resolution. Do you foresee that this will happen uh, that the yes, sun will set in this way for the foreseeable future, as in the next 10, 20, or more years. Is climate change going to change the rotation of the Earth? And, and, and assuming so, those? what I'm going to propose is that we have a motion to approve this for the next 10 years. Because <laughs> yeah, we do this every, we do this every year, year, and we always approve it unanimously. So unless you foresee the I don't this phenomenon changing. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, they're not going to let us do that. Right. 
because say in year three they decide to put a band out there and they go rogue and, and there's no well, way to rescind it then. Sure. We're approving it subject to change. We can always cancel it. I would have really preferred you did a yeah. year at a time. If that, I think one year. Uh, keep in mind that this crowd, if it's a cloudy evening, is not likely to be anything like what you just saw. In the picture. Absolutely. It's weather permitting. Weather. If it's raining, happen. Yeah, but we have to approve it before we know the weather. Of course. Absolutely. I have some news. Um, uh, Captain, Captain Mallet. Mallet. Mallet is here. Um, okay. so we need so really I'd need like to, to propose a resolution that, right. we propo that we approve so this for the next 10 years. Well, so um, I'd like to make a suggestion, ask a question, because I live at 127, 179. And what you're doing is great, because the first couple of years, the 20th precinct had to bring cruisers in because it was chaos before you closed it. However, as these events get more and more popular, and certainly this is not yet anywhere near the balloon thing. There hasn't been enough consideration for those people who live there and need to go get to their homes. So please keep this in mind for the parade, although they haven't staged it last year there. The problem is, and this is my concern, that if the vendors start coming in, and I don't know who controls the licenses for that, it's made it very chaotic for and parts. okay well do they come to you or i mean all i'm saying is it becomes very dangerous for elderly of which i'm one trying to swim uphill um with the lemmings of the people who are there um for the uh, what wonderful events both of them but they I'm concerned about it getting out of control. For, this is only for one hour, really. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because 79th Street last year was chaos. So. Okay. Um, uh, can we I'm continue gonna, this after um, Captain? You have, a, you have a resolution that hasn't been seconded. Right. Uh, second. Do you want for 10 years or you want one year? One year is fine. Okay. So resolution is for 10 years. Do you have to make a 10 second it? Don't. You can't do 10 minutes. Would you make a, a friendly uh, amendment to do it for one year? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you to okay. Yes, All those in favor of approving the street closer for Manhattan Edge, raise your hand. For one year. One year. One year. One year. One year. I'll agree to that. Seven. Okay. All those opposed? Anyone abstaining? Great. Board, non, non board members, non uh, committee members. Uh, three uh, non committee members against. Many members abstaining. Great. And with that, we will hear from Captain. Uh, thank Mallon. you very much. Thank Mom. you. And so, thank you. Uh, Captain Mallon. It's great to be back. Um, mm -hmm. you remember her, I had yeah. fun working with the board, the traffic committee, when I was the XO of the two four. Yeah. Quick thing, we always live stream our meetings. That's so fine. We want to make you aware of it. And That's fine. you know. So um, let me start really with me. Uh, most importantly, um, I'm flanked by Captain Thomas Palmer the executive officer of the 20th precinct he's got a long and very impressive resume that includes being an aide to colin powell in the military um and he is going to be running the traffic program uh so we're both going to speak tonight um the first thing i just wanted to start off with was last thursday everyone knows what happened on 70 and west end avenue 85 year old female pedestrian crossing the street um, because we're web streaming this, um, and because we have people who are not on the board in the room, um, what we'll do is this is before I leave, I have the videos with me on my computer. We can step in the side room and any board members that actually want to see the video of what happened. It is disturbing. It's not, it's not graphic, but you know, this is a fatality. Um, so it's a traffic, it's a transportation community few more seven. I'll show it to you guys and you guys alone. Um, so West End Avenue in general, um, I'm actually, you know, it, it's, it's a real, it, it was, it's a tragedy. And when you see it, it's jarring. Um, what I can report is this, and I saw this, I, I prepped for this after we had our last community council meeting. Um, we actually write, and this is a good thing because it's, it's the most residential corridor I have in the 20th precinct. We do write a disproportionate amount of summonses over there. Um, West End Avenue accounts for 9.4% of our collisions, 
and we do close to 15% of all of our enforcement on West End Avenue, mainly because it's a high residential zone with a lot of pedestrians. Um, of our truck enforcement, it accounts for about 10% again of our total truck accidents, and we're doing close to 25% of our truck enforcement on West End Avenue, of course, because of the regulations there. In the coming weeks, we're gonna, uh, we don't have in our in the 20 day period, we don't have this accident was. It's I can't confirm or deny that this was due to speeding. This is under investigation by our collision investigation squad, which is not, of course, in the 20th precinct. Um, we're looking into it. They tried to take measurements. I don't know what they're going to find uh, if the if the Jeep in question was exceeding the speed limit. Um, we only have two speeding summonses there in the last 28 day period. Um, that, of course, is going to be ramped up, um, especially as the weather gets warm and we have more and more pedestrians out there. Um, somebody had a question about a, um, a vendor that was just sitting at a meter. Is that is that person in the room? I was, I was yes, I'm here. Do you want to go ahead with that? Yes, let's see if I can. Go ahead. Um, so we have a food truck in front of our building, which is 10 West End Avenue. And I'm sorry, one more time. What's the address? Uh, 10 West End, West End Avenue, Got between it. West 59th and West 60th Street. So that food truck was there for about six months, and we're trying, uh, we, uh, we tried to make uh, him aware that uh, he's bothering the residents of the building. How is he bothering the residents? It's making a sound because... Is there a generator? A generator okay. that works at night and it works in the daytime, so same loud noise on okay. top of it. Uh, food truck. So we made a letter and we spoke with them. Uh, community board. Uh, is it 24 hours? That truck? Is there 24 yeah, hours? It stays there 24 hours without leaving, without uh, reparking. It just stays on a meter park. On a meter park is Yes. It stays 24 7? Yes. He gets yeah. violations, he gets uh, summonses. Uh, he does? What, yes. Okay. He gets many of them. And he received uh, mm -hmm. many warnings, but he pays them and he makes good money That's there because of the construction. Uh, around the area, many construction sites. So you always have. Excuse me, sir. Does he have a license number on? Oh, his? Yes, we made a picture of the license plates. It's right here. I prepared the uh, the letter and the pictures, so we have it all here documented. Great. You can first me that. So, here's the, we had you know, in my first week here, we had one of these on uh, 81st Street between Central Park West and Columbus. It was a popcorn truck, mm -hmm. and it was driving the residents crazy because the guy, same thing, had a generator there, and he was right on the northeast corner, but he was parked on a hydrant and in a crosswalk, so I, I personally just walked right over, took a cop with me, and we gave him about $400 worth of tickets, and he hasn't been back on the weekends for the last couple of weeks. This is a little more complicated. So just so everyone knows in the room, we don't write meters in the 20th precinct anymore. The police officers don't do it. And the reason is, is we have our civilian traffic agents do it. They're equipped with devices that can tell you whether or not the meter has been renewed. In other words, you can use a cell phone app, you can go to the web, and you can remove, you can renew your um, parking slip, you know, that the meter prints out. And, you know, so what we'll do is, we had a conversation recently about, um, um, we had this conversation with the civilian traffic managers about two things last week. The first is if anybody sees these weird plaques around 79th Street in Amsterdam that say honorary New York City, New York State police surgeon, they're not real plaques. <laughs> so what the problem was, the guy was renewing the meter constantly and we towed two of those cars right away for not, the guy wasn't feeding the meter at all. We had traffic over, we towed him. Um, if it's excessive, we can try and set an operation to tow him. It's hard, though, if he refuses to move from the truck. We'll see, but we can certainly touch base and give him more tickets because you can't you can't sit on the meter and recycle after a certain amount of time. You're allowed to refill, refill, but after, I think, whatever the extended time period is, if it says, like, two-hour parking, whatever it might be, you have to move. Um, so we'll take a look into that. It, we'll see if we can get the health department to make sure that he's compliant with everything that he's doing. I get it. The generator sucks. Right? Can I say that on webcast? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. Is this it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the generator is terrible. It's uh, it's awful for the residents. Uh, furnish me with the information. Uh, we'll be in touch um, and we'll see what we can do. Yes, leave us yeah. the license number, please. Yeah. Captain, um, just two. a quick question. You mentioned that West End Avenue represents 10% of truck uh, accidents. Correct. Well, since trucks are forbidden from West End Avenue, except where they're mm -hmm. making deliveries, except for the making deliveries, does that figure represent vehicles? A, a sizable amount of vehicles that should not be on West End, but are on there. I don't want to. You know what? I can't answer that right now. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. And get you back. Get you back to you at the time when these when and what they're doing uh, when that's happening. That'll be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. And can you say that you're um, issuing summons? Is what's your threshold for speeding for speeding summons? It's discretion of the officer. You know, like this. You know, the speed limit is um, on just about every street, 25 miles an hour. Um, you know, it's not, I'm going to tell you, we're not, they're not writing 26. It depends on which officer of the traffic safety team is out there. Some might call it five, some might call it 10 miles an hour over the limit. You know, I haven't had that discussion with them. No, and also you have to, we have to account for the inaccuracies of speedometers. Uh, normally there was in, you know, 3% accurate. So, you know, we at least have to give them, and it's usually double that. It's usually about 6% discretion. Um, above the speed limit because we can't calculate every car is different. Um, so those speedometers in the past in the car not calibrated. Uh, so it could read 25 and it's really the car is really going 28 or 29 miles an hour. So we do have to take that. If, if you stop a vehicle for speeding, does the officer have an electronic device with them that once they check the license plate can see if they were a repeat offender or not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, your phone. Our phones, uh, it's really cool actually. Right. Your phone can give somebody every parking ticket. It's actually like if you've watched like 24, like we're finally here with our phones. <laughs> um, like we can actually not only see every parking ticket, every moving violation, we can see from right from the phone every LPR, every license plate that you've gone by. So they, that all weighs into it. And, and this woman who was killed there, the initial report was that she was crossing against the light. Yeah. Is, um, that's accurate. That's accurate? That's accurate. Yeah. yeah. And I'll show you, like I, I said. Thought there may have been speeding involved there. I, we can't, yeah, we, we can't, I, this is what we have, we have a video and there were, I don't believe there were pavement marks, I'm not sure, it's it's not up to us, like we can't tell in the precincts whether or not the collision investigation squad will get back to us and let us know, mm -hmm. and they have not, and then I'll say, I'll, I'll say this, is that um, she was, she was cooperative, the motorist was cooperative, she stayed on scene, uh, Tom, can you tell me, you tell me that we still have the vehicle, Yes, we do. Um, from what it seems like, and it's like like Captain Mallon said, it's very hard to determine at this point. But the vehicle is actually stopped at the red light initially, and then uh, when the, the the elderly woman tried to cross the street is after the light had turned green. So that motorist had actually just took off from a stop. So within you know the average intersection is approximately thirty feet. Uh, in that short amount of time, I, I would. You know, if I had to guess, and it's sheerly a guess, I would I wouldn't suspect that that person was was traveling at an excessive rate of speed because they had just started from a stop. Um, it was just unfortunate that the, the woman attempted to make it across the street uh, in that short amount of time. You can you can see her, you know, at a at a pretty decent trot to try to make it across in time, and uh, you know, unfortunately, the motorist just didn't see her, and you know, it was unfortunate she was hit. Roberta. I live on that corner, and um, over the last 20, 25 years, there's probably been five or f four or five fatalities um, on or near that corner, um, and all involving seniors. So, um, and, and I see people, you know, crossing illegally, you know, doing dangerous thing. I, I watch the fire truck stop on a dime to avoid hitting somebody at the 69th street crosswalk who didn't hear the fire truck coming so i'm just wondering if there's some kind of outreach we could do Absolutely. with, yeah. with we're with, doing uh our community affairs officers uh, my crime prevention officer and my traffic team they're all out uh doing a community outreach with senior centers they go out they advise them of you know the, the proper way to cross Especially given their age and, and you know, I'm not, thinking of, of the couple of the buildings that 
some of our seniors don't go to the senior center. Okay. We can definitely reach out. We can, can out talk and, and do something some, through yeah, the local absolutely. building. Absolutely. You know, if you can contact me, we can, we can uh, definitely set up some specific buildings. Um, we definitely do outreach. We, we put, uh, we have high visibility tape yeah, yeah. that we attach to canes and walkers. Uh, we also have high visibility shoelaces that could be not necessarily or solely attached to shoes, mm -hmm. but we can attach them to bags or uh, out or outer garments and stuff like that, so they can be seen uh, more easily by by mortals. Yes, Mickey. We have a real problem with the academy bus lines. They think that West End Avenue is their playground. I have a picture. I'm just looking forward with two buses. You know just going down West End Avenue. They go up and down West End Avenue. They think that they're private street. And I don't know what you can do, but I would suggest if you can reach out to Academy and tell them, stop it, <laughs> or start giving them more tickets. Okay. Because it is- it's Those aren't um, intercity buses. Those are usually chartered or going to the Hamptons or to uh, or Atlantic come, City or what have you. They're off the George Washington Bridge. They yeah. come down Broadway, and rather than continue on Broadway, they get come down 106 where West End starts, and they just take a straight shot yep. down to like 59th Street or wherever it is they're going. No, I ask an honest question, keeping in mind I've been here for only, this is my fifth week here, does that fall under, and I honestly don't know, does that fall under the same regulation as trucks or buses permitted, are non-city buses permitted to go on West End? They are not, not. okay. There's automobiles only. So they should, they should that they should, should be the easiest thing in the world to pick they off. should never yeah. be there. Yeah. And I'd be happy to show you a picture of them if I ever get past my daughter's um, Because the issue of that tragedy was raised, and I also know someone who lives at that corner who looked out their window and saw yeah. the aftermath of it, um, they wonder if, not because of this tragedy, but for some other near misses, if we could look at the traffic signal at the corner of 70th and West End and have, when there is, a, a, when perhaps have a green arrow so that you can turn east on 70th street and when you can do that pedestrians are not allowed to cross so nobody gets hurt and to add to that i've been asking for a long time if a car is going south on west end avenue when they get to 70th street we did ask for daylighting but the daylighting is only during the school hours and if you're crossing west uh, 70th Street going from the north side to the south side, cars that are making the right-hand turn, they're going south or there, and they're going towards the river, they turn, they don't see the pedestrians in the crosswalk. And we have had, I have almost been hit on several occasions. Co and Colleen from DOT is so, here. So I'm Colleen Chatterley from City Department of Transportation. We'd be more than happy to look at Daylighting the intersection you just mentioned and the traffic signal. As if well. we could, yeah. Can we get a letter from the board? That would be great. Um, I think they do, but when you can turn left or east from southbound West End on to, on to 70th Street, I think pedestrians can also walk the uh, the crossing, and that's we have a, a lot of that yes. in various uh, places like that is not the same. You can scroll through this. Um, Mark, did you have your hand up? I just wanted to add on to Ruber's other comment about the outreach, um, which is that DS199 is right there, yep. and there are other public schools along that corridor, um, and so it would be great if some of that uh, invitation could be made to the other mobility challenged end of our spectrum, which is people with small children and strollers, um, um, you know, which bookends the uh, mobility yep. challenges of the older folks. Oh, and, and just quickly, just so that you know, DOT yeah, has a safety education yeah. program. We'd be more than happy to join the precinct when they do their senior outreach to your presentation and at the school as well. That'd be great. So we can coordinate that. The woman from the community, I don't know. Yeah, thank you. I've been hit on a bike more than five times, obeying the law, following the law, and recently I've resorted to jumping up on the sidewalk as a life-saving effort as a cyclist, just at the last minute because um, the most recent guy that hit me was a young guy texting oh. and there was an electric cyclist coming in the opposite direction who I didn't hear. They're the most dangerous, silent um, danger to uh, all of us because they are non-licensed. And I think the city, perhaps the police would consider 
requiring them to become licensed motorists because they're traveling above 25 miles per hour. They're silent. Many of them don't speak English. They don't honor any of the lights, horns. Well, point of information, electric bikes, not pedal assist bikes. Electric bikes yeah. are illegal. They can't be licensed. They're illegal. They're, they're in the thousands now on right. the upper yeah, we, west side. We, we seized them. The yeah, yeah. We seized over I, I've seen. reported dozens of them, officer, and I... We, I, we seized over 20 years. You mentioned very texting. Very our texting in the 28-day period, we're up 30% in texting summons. It's nice to really have some calmer. I think um, it would be a great initiative to, to create a licensing requirement for... They can't be allowed. They're illegal. They're not supposed to be on the street yeah. at all. They can't be licensed. It's yes, totally illegal. They're seen. What about the electric assist ones? Because you see them, the they're yeah. using I'm this. I'm not an expert on this, but I'll tell you what I know. There are, there are, you probably know more about this. There are three classes, and there's one class that's pedal assist that oh, is legal. Yeah. But anything that's considered an electric bike is illegal, and now to the experts, is that pretty much the story? Anything with a throttle. If it's got a throttle, it's illegal. We we, we take it. And we and now, the thing is, what hap was happening last year Thank is you. that at this at this time, we probably would have had like two or three years, like two or three in the year. Now we're up over 20. And the reason is, is that the cops hated to, to chase them and write them because the summons used to go to the delivery person. The city council changed the law, and now we can write the business. So if the poor delivery guy is out there just trying to earn a living, yeah, we still actually kind of see, we seize the bike, but the summons, which is carries a very hefty fine, it goes to the Oak Court, now it goes right to the business. But to get the bike back, don't, don't they have yeah. to fight the bike? No, we don't get the bike back. Oh, you don't? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. 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 no, we deliver them to the front. You want to talk about where they go? Oh, no, we seize them and then we, we deliver them to um, a uh, like a big landfill. <laughs> <laughs> they have to they can't be they have to so so we have to like oh this, we have to like we can't even we have to do special transports with them. They can't be mixed with regular property because every now and then if they get hot they're stored in the wrong place like the batteries explode. Yeah, I understand that, but I thought they they get a summons and a fine and they'll pay the fine and get the bike. No, back. no, we seize the bike. The, the police told us that about six months. Ago. No, no, we we our bike our garage was like filled with them and we had to make a special arrangement to have a. Uh, so they, so this one, yeah, I think to recall. I got a certain amount of money. How long? How long did this take? Yeah, it's been going on. Wait, wait, wait. Since the procedure was revised, I mean. Months and months ago, we had like 20 in our garage, yeah. and then uh, we'll say about nine months ago. Just cleared oh, yeah. so nine months ago. Oh, yeah. oh, the guy, oh, sorry, yeah. uh, get yeah. gusto. Um, <laughs> can you define daylighting? Oh. So, oh, yeah. daylighting is when a parking space is removed and we put um, a no standing, any time regulation, so that vehicles making the turns, motors have a better visibility of pedestrians. Yeah, it helps visibility and improves safety. But but it also helps if you're crossing in the right place. Right. If you're crossing in the wrong place, it doesn't do you a bit of good, as we just well, learned, not unfortunately. A uh, gentleman in the rear. Yes. Yeah, uh, this one was going to say, especially with regard to what she mentioned about being hit by bikes. Um, I, uh, well, well I, I, I get, because uh, I, I get around on a bike. I have a problem with people who step into the green bike lane thinking it's meant for walking. And and they're, they're and they're often looking down traffic, so their backs are to me. Um, my suggestion would be that if we could somehow paint some kind of marker in the bike lane that says "Don't walk here," so people won't impulsively step off the sidewalk and ride into the bike lane. That's that's what I'm going to say. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. Um. <laughs> So first of all, I'd like to thank DOT for the wonderful improvements they've made on the 79th Street corridor, because you may remember me spatting off on that for years. Um, I'm a senior citizen. For a while, I was disabled. Um, I have nothing against bicyclists, but I think these are a forgotten population huh? on the Upper West Side that Vision Zero or whatever has totally ignored. And part of it has to do with continued, um, I guess, right hand or left hand turns by vehicles. But for me, I've been nearly hit a gazillion times by bicyclists, and I'm not talking about the electric bikes, I don't disagree. 
They are just not obeying the traffic direction, the traffic lights. Um, and I'm not saying all. They ride on the sidewalks. Um, and I would like to know what the 20th precinct outside of West End Avenue, I don't agree with that, but there are dense populations all over the West Side, can do to enforce or educate or whatever because it's really dangerous. The other thing is, the uh, sadly, the in spite of your improvements, the, because of, of the configuration of Amsterdam and 79th Street, you very often will get people running the red light. Um, and then the time to cross the north side of 79th Street um, across Amsterdam isn't enough. Do I have a red light on the arrow? The turn arrow? No, not the turn arrow. The um, the straight, the north oh, yeah. end arrow. Oh, right. Captain, make no response. Do you want to go with the? I'll actually let uh, Tom's got the bicycle summons numbers on right now. Yeah, we we have heavily increased uh, our bike bicycle enforcement, but we do realize that some uh, bicyclists don't obey the laws and they're required to uh, uh, operate under the same laws as vehicles. Yes. Um, <laughs> but in the past 28 days. Uh, we've written 91 uh, bicycle related uh, summonses as opposed to 44 in the same period last year. So that's actually a hundred and approximately 107% increase that we uh, enforce bicycle related summonses. And because these are we see electric. those, these are, yeah, not electric. not electric. These are just plain pedal bicycles. So we're at a 107% increase uh, because we do realize that you know, there are a certain population of bicyclists that, that don't obey the law. And we do actively and aggressively go out and, and try to make that, you know, uh, a safer place for everyone in the community. Yes, great. Can you tell me if you guys are coordinating with the 240? Who's ever driving yes. up and yes, down do. Broadway or West Angeles? Yes, we do. Yeah. We call for the precinct uh, because in this precinct, the corridor is basically stretched from the 20th precinct into the 24th. They there's almost no differentiation between the two. So we jointly work with, you know, the traffic team in the 24th precinct and Captain Manuel, who's the XO uh, in the 24th precinct, who uh, manages their traffic program. So we're constantly doing uh, joint operations up and down Broadway, Amsterdam, Columbus Avenue. Okay, Ken and then the guy no, all the way in the back. No, Richard, um, I just wanted to ask about enforcement priorities. We've, we just heard about an 85 year old woman killed, and then all of a sudden we're talking about the danger posed by bicycles. Um, you, I think we have about 400 serious injuries or so in, in this district um, every year. Uh, as far as I know, none of them are caused by bicyclists, and they're all caused by motor vehicles. All the de deaths in the 25 years that I've, well, no, in the nine years that I've been on the community board have been caused by motor vehicles, and yet, um, we're, we're celebrating the fact uh, that, that we've doubled the number of, uh, of uh, summonses against bicyclists who statistically pose absolutely no threat. Bikes, people people, uh, people, well, may, gotta, almost, correct you people may almost get hit. No, no I got to correct you there. I got to correct you. We had two fatalities in Central Park when I first got to, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm when I first got to that North. And also we have, we're up 18% in bicycle only, non-car non um, non accidents. Uh, we're up 11 versus, sorry, 13 versus 11, which is again a two, but it's 18%. We do get people injured by bicycle. Well, that, but it's I, true, it happens. No, it, it, is, it, it is not as frequent as cars. Right. So, no, I mean, and, and, and what percentage of your total summonses oh. are, are, the, are the bike? Oh, well, let's see, hold on a second. Bicycles? It's a very low percentage of it overall when you compare mm -hmm. the totality of all summons written. 100, 130 out of 33. Uh, out of close to 3,400 mm -hmm. of the hazardous violations. So, so, so their priorities are, are correct, obviously, yes. but yeah. you don't want to you don't want to overlook anything. Right. Thank you. And yeah. we get we remember also we also respond to community complaints as well, sure. which is you know like, and we get a lot. We get now. I have a bike. My wife has a bike. My four year old has a bike with like no pedals on it. Mm -hmm. I have a little chariot that I put on the back of my bike. I love my bike. I love the bike, but. Definitely here and all over Manhattan. Sometimes you have like like what like the riders who were in Central Park that mowed down that woman that was just going to FEO Schwartz. 
to pick up a birthday gift for her kid. Some people who are so <laughs> intense about it that they don't care about any of the signage and you know, at pedestrians, they ride on the sidewalks, they'll, you know. So I'm, I'm very friendly and I'm pro bike, but there's a percentage of people that cause it to generate a lot of community mm -hmm. angst, especially because we have an elderly population that's sometimes like terrorized by some of the more intense riders. Well, so we respond to those let, complaints. Let me, let me, I just want to make sure you're going after the real miscreants and the intense yes. riders as opposed Correct. to people just rolling through a red light. I mean, because that you can up your numbers very easy quickly by doing that. We, we write, we write, this is what we write with bicycles red lights, sidewalks, wrong way to one way. So street. somebody rolling through a red light. Would, would get a say if, two miles an hour. If, no, 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 no. No, we use discretion. You know, we use discretion. So if somebody stops and the intersection is clear, it's, it's okay. We're not look. No, again, the cops don't necessarily like pulling over a bicycle. No one joins the NYPD to be a New York City cop to pull over a bicycle rolling, rolling at two miles an hour. Um, I'm talking about like people that blow right through okay. stop signs. That's good. That's yeah. Good. And with those motorbikes, they definitely the e-bikes blow right through, and they go and they take the, they take streets the wrong way. And the thing is, the thing, yeah. And we're talking about like with e-bikes too, is that it's difficult because a pedestrian just sees a bike coming at them, and then they think, okay, it's safe. They don't realize it's moving at 25 miles an hour. Uh, so, yeah, no, and most and honestly, the, the vast vast majority of cyclists follow the law. It's a great it's a great way to get around. I like it, but then you have that like anything. It's a small percentage that we try and target. Sir, in the back. Hey, uh, last fall we had a fatality involving one of the illegal uh, 53 foot tractor trailers on 72nd Street. Uh, I was wondering if you could share any of the enforcement statistics around those illegal vehicles and, and what the punishment is on those, and are we, are we confiscating those vehicles? What are we doing to to stop those uh, more fatalities? On, oh, sorry, repeat the address one more time, please. 72nd and. Uh, I don't have stats specifically on. Um, well, I can tell you this: the Broadway corridor accounts for about 11% of our total collisions. Um, I don't have Broadway. I mean, keep in mind, like this, that I need to drill down to get that. I don't have that on me right now. If you want, we can come prepared for the next one, and we'll give you Broadway specific. You know, do you, do you have any stats about the, the illegal tractor trailers? What are the illegal? about illegal tractor trailers. How, how is the tractor trailer? Yeah, on Broadway. Well, just on Broadway, yeah. probably Columbus, all of them. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have stats on that. I'm sorry. I apologize. I uh, it seems like it's under enforced. I mean, I can. I, we have truck stats. I, I don't have that on me. Like uh, Felicia Montgomery is a traffic safety sergeant. She did a workup on West End Avenue for me in preparation. <laughs> Several times. Yeah, she's great. In preparation for the town hall meeting, and then no one held Roosevelt's town hall meeting, and then nobody asked a question on it. Um, <laughs> so uh, we did a workup on West End Avenue. I can ask her to do one on Broadway, and we'll, we can report back to you. I, I think for the whole district, essentially all 53 foot tractor trailers are illegal in our district. Uh, I see you. I can send you the, the link. From New York City.gov. Yeah, so no, no, I don't doubt it. Um, and it's under enforced and they're illegal. Yes. The um, I'm, I'm just wondering if, if a tractor trailer had to go from Midtown Manhattan for they some get special reason permits. to New Jersey and wouldn't fit in the Lincoln Tunnel, for instance, they because of the height, bridge. they would have to go up to the bridge. They would have no, to no, use the No, no, they do. And they, and they often, they have, special special permits. They they often special have signs permits. and they have special permits. Because so I've seen um, trucks with them with a sign. So I'm going to disappoint everyone in the room, and and let you guys know that this, uh, some of the, some of these specific things. So the NYPD, in general, does have people. We have the Motor Carrier Safety Unit. They drive like big SUVs. You'll see them. They pull over lots of trucks for lots of regulations. Mm -hmm. Like some of these you refer to, I'm not going to lie. We can look into it. We can train our people, but they're how do I say they're they're not obscure. But it's a specialized uh, section of traffic that your average police officer Doesn't is not trained in. Uh, so when it comes Putting to violations right. for tractor trailers and, and those type of commercial vehicles, our uh, specialized highway unit is the one that normally deals with those. And how many I mean, of those have, folks are there in the west side of Manhattan normally? We, we have to ask them to come in. Right. We I have see. to ask. We have to, we'll do that. We can speak with highway. If you have a certain place and a certain time where you're seeing that, we can have the motor carrier safety guys come in and do enforcement. What we focus on are the, what's known as like the hazardous violations. Um, talking like we do, 
um, cell phones texting, red lights, improper turns, failed to use pedestrian, speeding, disobey sign, and then tint seat belts, and then you know you have again some bicycle, a little bit of bicycle stuff, some TLC stuff. Um, we don't prioritize equipment violations so much anymore. We're we're looking on the Upper West Side. What my cops prioritize are the summonses that affect the life of the pedestrians and the bicyclists. That's what we're kind of really honed in on. To that point, um, every year, as Ken mentioned, every year in our district, which is the 2024, there are a few hundred, somewhere three to 450 people injured, according to the crash data that's posted online. Um, we as a board are fairly powerless. We can look up and see where there are crashes. We can see some basic information. Uh, and we can use our position as a board to just call attention to it and try to um, work with Colleen, work with you guys. I'm wondering what ways there are, and you don't have to answer it right now, for us to work more closely with you um, to be able to help analyze data and see like what the biggest priorities are, to put our weight behind what you guys have seen as you know the problem intersections or the problem types of enforcement, uh, work with you to talk with Colleen and just be one collective team to try to drive down that number. Because any of these anecdotes almost could take our eye off the ball of things that we know are the biggest priority that would reduce the number of crashes, injuries, and fatalities. Sure. And I worry that by chasing after whatever the, the trend of the day is, we're taking our eye off the ball when there's so much data out there and we know what's causing these things. We know where it's happening. We know a lot of information and we'd love to work more closely with you and be an asset for you to try to drive down that number of injuries and fatalities. Um, I think it's a great thing to do. We can do just if you want to stand and choose, you know, a small. If we want to do a small working group. Well, if you want, if you want to come in to the two O, um, happy to host you, and we'll share. Uh, none of this is privileged or confidential. We'll share all everything we collect with you. We'll have Felicia there. Right. And we can, you know, if we want to put our heads together, I like, I, I'm happy to collaborate with the community board. That's, you know, why we're here. So that's just an excellent question you just raised because we work very closely. Um, DOT works very closely with all of the traffic safety officers from Manhattan South and North. So whenever there is an accident prone location or whenever the and fatality occurs, of course we know about it. The precinct will let us know. Uh, you know, give us the accident report. So. We get traffic intelligence report for a particular intersection, which the precinct will reach out to us and say, hey, Colleen, can you look at the signal timing? Can you look to see if you can do an exam? Can you look at refurbishing the markings? So we do work very closely with the precinct when it comes to re-engineering, educating, and you know, a particular intersection. Yeah. yeah, and I almost worry that we're setting both of you on the wrong path. If in a favorite example, a few years ago, someone came in and complained about an intersection. While she was talking, I looked up the crash data, and there were no crashes, no injuries. It's the safest intersection in the district. Now, we yeah. should still be proactive if we hear of someone who's coming in. But still, if we were to go to either of you and say, you know, we need to step up enforcement at this intersection, or we need DOT to be really focused on this intersection, we could be taking your eye off the ball of something that a waste of would, resources. Yeah, it would be a waste of resources. And I want to make sure that what we're doing is the most helpful in, in that ultimate goal. I, I, would respond. I just want to respond to that. For example, my, my corner at 70th Street, it's no one has been hit. The, the accidents that have occurred at that corner have not have have not been on that particular the crossing on the on the west side of the street from north to south. But it's an accident waiting to happen because there are too many incidents there of of the cars turning. So, you know, having a meeting like this where there are, you know, where someone can come and say that they've had they that this particular spot is a problem waiting to happen and Colleen can come out and change the traffic light, it's not a big deal. So I, I think we need to keep we need to look at the data for sure, but we also need the the um, eyes on the street. I also think one of the problems in that I think it's incurable is human behavior. You can take all the stats that you want, and certainly they're helpful in identifying you know specific problems. But you've got to change human behavior. You've got right. to change people yeah. to be a little more cautious when they go through an intersection. Bicyclists, I will tell you, I live in fear because they're forever flying down my street because I'm on a hill 
and they like to go right down on the sidewalk and you kind of go around the corner and hope for the best that you can get to your house before getting hit. Bicyclists are insane, but it's human behavior. If they're taught differently, perhaps they'll act differently. I just don't think we can change the behavior enough. I think we can identify problem areas like you've talked about and like you've talked about, but there's a balance. Yes. I'm and not ready to give up though. I'm sure you're not, but <laughs> nobody's, we all want everybody to be safe. Nobody's asking anybody to give up on anything. Not to give anything up. Isaac, uh, just keep me this question, what, do you keep statistics or, or how do you combat cars are running red lights, especially if you have to get 96. 96. <laughs> Do you mean, are you, are you asking me the universe of total cars that run red lights and the total universe or the ones we summon at the that ones, intersection? Yeah, the ones you summon. I can I mean, get those. Do I don't have them on me. But I mean, well, how do you combat cars? I mean, what do you what do, you do to reduce the cars? I mean, I know you stop them. I mean, what percentage of them at that particular intersection? I should keep in mind 96 in Amsterdam is the 2 4, not the 2 up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it is the 2 4, but it just, it's a good question. Yeah. So. I mean, this, we don't. If there's a car stop and the person is warned and admonished, we don't have a stat on that. If there's, I can't tell you what percentage of the people that are pulled over. I can't do this for any intersection. I can tell you if you put it, if you request it of us, we can get back to you for any intersection. Say, okay, this is what we did year to date in the last 28 days. I mean, um, that intersection is, to me, since I've been living in this neighborhood for like almost 30 years. That is the most dangerous thing. I remember that. Running, running I remember it quite well. Uh, yeah, I remember it's a it's a well, well, it's, 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Believe it or not, Will is expecting a baby. So, oh. yeah. uh, I totally agree with what Richie said about um, following data, but I actually do have an intersection to uh, bring up as a hotspot because uh, sure. 81st in Amsterdam. If you're familiar, there's a barn stance at that one. Right on the corner from us. There you go. So uh, pedestrians um, in all directions have to walk sign at the same time. And I'm watching early, literally every morning, trucks just accept, just um, they're stopped at the red light and then they just go straight through it while the light is solid red. And so I wonder it's, if it's something where you can just make a note that some enforcement might be helpful yeah. before somebody gets injured. Susan and then me. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I'm gonna pause for one second, hold on. Captain Palmer's going to stay behind. Is that the intersection where they both turn exactly. out? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, have, I have class in 15 minutes. I just want to recap. Very, and I want to show anyone who wants to see it. I want, I'll show you the video. We'll step oh, yeah. inside the side really quick. Um, I don't think I want to see it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It's just it's for it's for anyone that does. It's yeah, it's for your own notification. It's it's not like gruesome. But you don't want to see it? Okay, no. great. Take my word. Then we'll take your word for it. Yeah. With the way Captain Palmer described it is accurate. If anyone does, you can reach me in the precinct. You can come by and I'll show it to you. Okay. Um, the five actionable items that I've got so far that we'll report back on is first is the uh, food truck at 10 West End Avenue. Uh, that's 59-60. We'll see what we can do. Um, oh, gone. Okay. We'll look at it. So <laughs> Academy. Oh, yeah, Academy yeah. Buses on West End Avenue, uh, number two. That's low-hanging fruit. We should be able to make some progress there, mm -hmm. including we'll reach out to the company. Um, number three, we'll take a look at 70 and West End Avenue at the signals there, and if we have to file the intel reports, okay. then uh, we will do so. Um, the next is the outreach at the buildings and schools, not just the right. buildings, but we'll do the schools too. Um, around 70 and West End, and then uh, last before I go, uh, 81 in Amsterdam, red lights. We'll take a, we'll take a look at that and we'll report and, and back to you. And we will work with you on the safety education. Awesome. Outreach. And what we'll do going forward is if you want to choose a day to come into Let's the 2 yep. um, it's, uh, we have like a comfortable meeting space there. 2-4 was terrible that way. There was like nowhere to sit in the 2-4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a comfortable meeting space and we'll set something up where we can have Sergeant Montgomery there. We can, you can give us any stats you want in advance. <laughs> um, and then we can. I think your data is a lot better than ours. Uh, I have what I can get from the PD crash data. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's nice because so there's a big change within the last, within actually this year. Um, some of this used to have to be inputted by hand and taken by hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, requ it, it required stick counts. 
from the precincts. Like Felicia would have to have somebody like sitting there trying to one, two, three, four. So now summonses, all the cars have printers in them. So summonses are given electronically so we can start, we can map stuff easier, we can pull the data easier. Excellent. And if they are written by hand, then they're taken back into the precinct and once again entered electronically. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably really, really, there's something that can come out of this is like we can do like uh, if, if people let me know that they want to do it I can coordinate with you guys yeah okay. and, come with and like what, just what one example we've asked for over the years and mm -hmm. maybe it's changed now the worst accidents that are occurring do you have the direction of traffic that they occurred in like north and south of east street yeah like a, like a westbound uh, vehicle was traveling on 81st Street and hit such and such at the on the west side of such and such. I if mean, you give me like if you want to talk about specific inc like incidents with, with injuries and fatalities, when you get a report of, of what yes, it does oh yeah, like, yeah you, you have it, that direction. Have, yeah, yeah, it does have that's it has all of the pertinent um, accident information. We would just have to pull that individual accident report. That would be helpful would for be us helpful. because we might be able to talk to DOT about changing various signals to prevent some of these things. Because we can't get that. We don't know we if cars are turning. We don't know It requires what direction the individual reports. You have to give me specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's Let's not it. aggregated yeah. anywhere. Right. We'd have to look at individuals. So if you mm -hmm. had specific either fatalities or or ones, probably what I draw it is, is tell me if you think of this, is we could look at any accident where CIS responded, Correct. and we could try and figure out direction. CIS means someone's so seriously injured that they may die. Now, all, mo most of the time, people survive those. But in other words, it's, there's a possibility. We could look at accidents where there's a possibility. Any possibility and the if there's yeah. multiple at the same intersection, that would tell us something. Yes. So. We, yes. we yeah. also, we get number of people injured or killed by pedestrian, cyclists, or motorists. We don't know if it's, I think the acronym you gave me is RMA, Refused Medical Attention, or KSI of Killed or Serious Injury. So it could be that someone you know, twisted their pinky or that they're near death, and we don't know the difference. And so without knowing that, without knowing which way cars are traveling, without knowing if they're turning or going straight, so if we and, and we can get specific, to this. Yeah, you need to get to your class. If you about a specific intersection, if you could help. If you ask me about a specific intersection, I'm pretty sure I am. You, we have to go through each individual accident. But we can query that intersection for all the accidents. So if we had a problematic intersection, we could figure out yes. whether it was cars going north or so cars going yeah, south. So if you have, if you gave me one intersection That's and you wanted to like say, okay, right. engage us a little bit of time, and we'll right, be able, right. to, we should be, we should. Excellent. Be able to, and I wish Felicia was here. She's no, you can. You just have to go through each individual accident to report. Yeah, yeah and but and I mean, like we should be able to report. And whenever we're making a change at an intersection related to accidents, again, accident problem locations, we always reach out to the local precinct for their so crash reports, right. so we can see what's causing the crashes there at the intersection. Correct. And Captain, thank you again. No, yeah, no, uh, so this much. is um, you're going to see us, uh, you know, one of the two of us at every one of these. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then Susan, you're coming in tomorrow? Okay. And the same thing, if you want to set up an appointment to come in and talk traffic, just give us a little advance warning, we'll get you on the calendar. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, uh, you'll be meeting with both myself and the good captain tomorrow. I just want to uh, back up what the bird was saying, that, um, you know, data is all well and good, but um, sometimes you can see a situation where sure. it's just an accident waiting to happen. On the way up here tonight, I live at 71st of Broadway. On the way up here tonight, I was passed by three people riding a bicycle on the sidewalk. Three. That's it. That's a what? Um, it's a person with that's a 15 minute walk, three bikes. It's a problem. Captain Malin, from the Sublimes that are ridiculous, no one's mentioned this honking. I've seen police walk right by a car sitting with their hand on the horn. No one gets tickets for that. And I know it's not a life yeah. it, it could be actually, actually if they, yes. if they it, promote someone yeah. to do something that they don't feel comfortable doing. That's right. I've I've been in an intersection with a car waiting for me to cross and the car behind them yes. was honking. Why doesn't he run what is he gonna run me down? It's uh it's summonable and it's not something we do a lot of. If it's also a quality of life. It's a quality of life issue. It's a pain in the ass summons to write in the sense that you have to go, the officer has to establish. That that's the person who is honking, and they all say like, no, you should test the horn and everything like that to make sure it sticks. Um, if there's a particularly bad intersection with where a lot of traffic is causing that, 
Can't you just have some officers start yelling at people saying shut up? <laughs> well, the, the, yeah. the other issue is. Well, remind them that you got a ticket for it. Do you have well, an yeah, instrument? Why don't, why don't you go to your class? Can detect which car is hopping. No, no. So like a directional mic or something. No, and then you have to establish two that it's, it's so it's a tough summons. Because then you have to establish two that it's not justified. Right. Yeah. So it's it's I I've written I think when I was a cop I wrote one and I got clobbered in court. Right. Because um, you have to be able to prove. Yeah, that this person, this individual didn't feel like he need he or she needed to um yeah. to prevent some type of danger. So <coughs> the onus is on the cop to say, what did this person mean when you really can't be in that person's yeah. head? Maybe you can tell them. Yeah, he's to get to his class. So so clocking, let's let's I'll, I'll discuss it. Um, Captain Power, by the way, I guess get like really really quick. So I got here, we got here about the same time, and all of our enforcement was uh, was down for the year in the hazardous violations, and now we're up in like half of them, thanks in, 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 in basically a short six weeks, uh, thanks to his work. Um, you know, whenever I walk by his desk, he's usually like looking at reports and data or talking to someone from the traffic team in there. Um, you know, we're both involved in this, um, but I couldn't have asked for anybody better. And uh, the whole traffic team in the 2 -0 was in very good hands. Very so good. you'll see either one of us at all of your uh, at all the meetings going Thank forward. You. Great. Thank Thank you. So Thank you. So it's a pleasure being back with you guys. Like, yeah. This is uh, you're really not, fun. Thank you. Yes, I'll yes. yes. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, and then we'll set up a small meeting. That's and, great. And you can give me just give me advance notice of what kind of data you want to call, yep. and then we can come to the 2 -0. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Did you want to add anything? No, no, I think, I, I, I think we're doing uh, a very good job so far. We have a ways to go. I mean, there's always room for improvement. And I always expect the, you know, the, the best and most professional uh, interaction with the community with all my cops. Uh, so thank you. And, uh, you know, I know their issues, and with everyone's help and everyone's collaborative effort, you know, I think that we'll, yeah. we'll we'll make sure that we can make this the safest community that we possibly can. Right. You know, we can't eliminate, like uh, the young lady says, we can't eliminate Thank you accidents you. because, uh, we, you know, it's, it's people's attitude when they're driving. Uh, but if we can implement plans and actions that mitigate it and, and, and bring it as low as we possibly can, you know, that's what I'm here for. You know, that's what my team is here for. You know, so we want to minimize it and mitigate it as 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 best as we can. Uh, and, and safety is first. Very good. Really Thank appreciate it, so Captain much. Palmer. Um, anything else for Captain? Yes, sir. What is the penalty for uh, bicycles running red light? It's a sum. It's, it's, it's the same as if you were driving a car and ran a red light. Okay, so that's like a fine, or do you show up in court and pay a fine? You could you could pay a fine, or you could opt to go to a trial at, at traffic court. How much would a fine be? Oh, I'm top of my head. One ninety. One ninety. One ninety. Yes. New business? Not yet. Oh. Yes. Yes. Captain Palmer, I had a question just about semantics about the use of the word accident. Um, I know that the NYPD has dropped, yes. dropped the, uh, they now call them collisions. Collisions, correct. Just, I'm, I'm wondering, is that something that's starting to permeate? Or? It is. Uh, we used to call, you know, accidents, prone locations, APLs. We've, we've gone away from that term and we call them CPLs, collision prone locations, because the term accident wasn't really, a lot of them are present are preventable, so they're not accidents. Uh, when you can place blame on an individual, somebody acted decide, improperly, so it's, not, it's an not an accident. It's not an accident, it's a collision. So we've gone away from that accident term, and we said, you know, we tend to use the term collision. You know, some of the older people on the job, like myself, who, you know, who's are just ingrained with accident, we, we still say it sometimes unintentionally, but. Uh, the term that we want to use is collision because Got it. they are collisions, and whether there was intent or or uh, 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 some type of blame, then we'll figure that out later. Um, but they're not all accidents. So.
All right. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, well, can I make a quick announcement about the mailing list? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Wait, wait, why don't we let the, the officer go? In? I thought we just said thank you, goodbye. Oh, oh. you're free to leave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 He enjoys coming to these meetings and he'd like to always have five actionable items that he takes away. Not 20, not 30, but four or five that he can actually. Okay, so on, on, on 30. Okay. For everybody who is uh, visiting, our community members, if you'd like to be on the email list for Community Board 7 to get notification, you get the monthly newsletter, you get uh, update notifications. Please come and sign up here. Signing in at the front desk will not get you on the mailing list. If we're already on the list, we need to do that. You do not. <laughs> Nothing new. Great. Thank you, Sue. Um, we have an application for a newsstand on the northeast corner of 79th Street. Mr. Islam, is that you? Yes, sir. All right, please come up. Northeast corner of 79th Street. Broadway. Huh. Where? So in front of the shoe store? There's a subway entrance and a bus stop. I'm going to find out when I see the uh, map, I guess. Because it wasn't it wasn't included in the uh, stuff here. In the northeast? No, northeast. No, 79. So 79. 79. Yeah, it's like it's a two-story oh, commercial building. Right. And there's a new multi-story residential building on the, the other half, half of that. Right. That I know the staff went up for a while. Right. Do you have a, a site plan by any chance? Um, a drawing? Because it wasn't given here. Where, 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 do you, where do you want to try to put this thing in? On what? In the uh, northeast corner. Yeah. On 79 or on 79. Corner? On 79. Okay. Well, I get through the food cart, but. Uh, yes. You want to go where the food cart is now? Yeah. The coffee guy? Is that where you want to go? He's leaving? Well, he doesn't own that they spot. Do they don't own the spot. It's a coffee cart that's there now? Yes. They're every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, every work day. I'm sorry. No, so we're not there all day or most of the day. Um, they're there. Do you have a sign plan that they have? Do you have a lawyer? You have a lawyer. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. Um, is he? They're not here, are they? No. Do you know how many feet east of the intersection you're talking about? Yeah, I think so. 18 feet is outside the road. We need only 15 feet. Yeah. You you don't have a representation of the design of it yet, do you? Uh, yeah, I have it alone. Is it one of the big ones or one of the small? It's small. It's small. <coughs> so help, help. Why is it this? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a uh, five by five by two. Five by two. Say, say that again. Five by twelve. The small one, not the big one. And do you plan to be open seven days? <coughs> At what hours approximately? Uh, seven to seven. Seven to seven. And storage of Sunday papers, where would that be? Yeah, everything. Within the newsstand's footprint, yeah, news correct? News oh, so you would be there in time when he delivers the papers, is what I'm saying. Yeah, in the morning. All yeah. right. Um, is the address like at 79th and um, Amsterdam? Broadway. 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 On 79. Where the so that, that location is, as I said, is currently occupied by a food cart which doesn't have succession rights uh, for sure. Uh, but it is also where DSW frequently uh, unloads. Yeah. Uh, it's also where the Goodwill store typically unloads, especially now that they've got a new residential building at 207 West 79th. So um, is there a loading, doc loading zone there? No, it's actually a bus layover zone, as far as I know, yes, yeah. uh, for the M79. The main bus layovers are actually down in Riverside Park, right. but often right. there are too many. That's that's for the uh, for the crew um, rest stop and things of that nature. Right. And it's the northwest corner, you said? Northeast. Northeast. Sorry. Northeast. So yeah. it's for the uptown. It is the uptown one train. The uptown one train. And when well, is it's it? Around, it's around the corner, isn't it? It's so, on 79th um, Street, right, but it'll, it'll be people who are... <laughs> 
because you might be obliterated by the bus layovers and the things that Mr. Diller just mentioned, did you look at the possibility of any of the other corners at that intersection? The Northwest already has one. It does. I think the South and the South East has a new store. The gentleman is here. Uh, correct. Yeah, have twenty years. Discos. Twenty years. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. like a a store. Actually, has really good gear too. Yeah. <laughs> when when is it going in? When, when, is when would it? When would the new stand open? Uh, it depends on various approvals downtown. But when did you hope to open by? I'm With just asking lawyer. because of all the changes to the subways. I don't know if it's going to, like, by the time it goes in, will it be after? With the changes with the BC train and traffic coming over, will that help in any way? That would help. Yeah, it would help drive some business well, to the new stand. It actually wouldn't because the 81st Street station is not closing, and that's the one that would be. No, but it's going to drive people to it. Well, I don't know how. 86th Street would walk to 86th and Broadway, and 72nd would walk to 72nd and Broadway. Oh, my goodness. Okay. okay. There might be some. I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to find out when it would actually. No, that's that's. And that's only for six months. That's Amsterdam. Oh, she's Broadway. Why? Rich, you have you have the uh, intersection. Yeah. 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 It's like a shoe. Yeah. 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 Right here. No, this is not. No, that is not it. I was looking. They want to be on 79th Street. Yeah, east of Broadway. There's no way they could be on Broadway. So if there's no effect, that would be shut down. It's the one, two, three Can you blow that up? Do you have something to say about the one line? It's one line. It's not the It's a local station, yeah. No, no, They have the coffee shop, coffee cab, and other thing. They have the gyro park. After that, I think so, there will be bus stop. After that, we have some, the interlaced subway. After that, a bus stop. This side will be a coffee shop. Other side will be gyro park. This is the other side, it's southeast side. It is the corner. Okay. But we are doing 20 years business. But we are doing a lot of other business. I don't know how long we have to comment on this, but I think everyone should be safe. That's not true. Do you guys have Lana? No, we're where? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's the interesting thing. Yeah. And there's some new stands, too. Can I just strike on the front of the DIP? Yes, that's good. Andrew? Yeah. Question for the applicant? Yeah. Are you guys intending to sell cigarettes? I don't see no more cigarettes in the New York City. Nice. They don't give me the cigarette. No kidding. Well, that's good. Yes. Huh. Is that right? Yeah. 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 They don't give me I don't want to change your, your view about that. Yeah, yeah. last 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 from last two months. They don't give me actually no more cigarettes. That's the unplug. That's unplug. I think we should have a new profile. Maybe so what as kind of form comes in the we're projecting a picture. But this gentleman has, where is your picture? No, put the screen down. Yep. Salt is going to be a sunglass store. Sunglass store. Sunglass store. We're going to be a sunglass store. Oh, sure. Three storefronts in south of 79, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, senior. I just see over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 There we are. So this thing is going to impact. There used to be a point to where you're expecting to do it. Yeah, I'm just going, uh, just give me one minute. I'm going to Keep twisting around. There it is. That's it. Yeah, right there. In this space, correct? Yeah, yeah, next to coffee. Next, next. Yeah, yeah, coffee. 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 No, this is Twisted slowly, Rich. Right Where's your store? Right the store is to the left. To and the left of the way. Yes. And this is Amsterdam? Left. This is Broadway. 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 Yep. Okay. This is, so, so now you're standing at the app floor looking across yeah. the street. Okay. Keep okay. doing that. Right. So right about where the app is. Okay, there we go. Jumped. Now I don't know why I'm here. No, Unique news. That's him. That's him. Yeah, I'm going to scroll left a little bit so we can see both. Oh, there we go. And that's where it needs to be. 
That's all the time. He wants to be over there. Right, right. Okay. Right. So one, two, three storefronts away. I'm sorry, I have a problem with that. Yeah. I, I have a real problem with that. It's too close. This man pays rent. He pays tax. taxes. Real estate, everything. High right tax. We don't presume that that um, that that uh, newsstands don't pay taxes in terms of income tax. But you pay uh, real estate tax as well. Yeah. That's the area. And I actually think we had an application for this intersection once before, oh, and this that. issue came up. Yes. yes. Okay. How high a rent is this generally? One of us see the road and the full car the gyro car, the other side, the car next to coffee shop. And the coffee shop, there's the gyro, the new order. So it's a very right. busy. There's spot. a uh, fruit guy that's on this corner. Yeah. Yeah, fruit, no more the fruit there. So fruit there and so on the side. northwest right, corner, there is already a newsstand, yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 This is a 2014 photograph. Since then, the apartment okay, building. I, I hired. I'm sure I hired before. The part, Wait, let me. The, the apartment building put in um, planters. There they are. Um, oh, there. To uh, which makes which prevents the it's October 7th, 2017. Now you're now you're closer to yeah. So where you want to be is basically where this is, the white part. The existing newsstand is the new store. It's right there. It's right here. It's not the corner. It's one down. I'm going to try another view. Someone has to see the other corners. So I'm going to do it on another. So in the northwest corner, there is already a newsstand. In between the, right. the subway entrance, by the church, no, by right, the church. Right, right by the church, there it is. There's a newsstand oh. over there yes. by the yeah. church, and there's and nothing. There's a newsstand on the south side. And the on wall. the chase, under by the chase bank, there's nothing. No, no that that intersection is crazy. I don't know whether it's up to us to decide how many newsstands should be well, in particular. Corner. I just have a problem with. No, but if they're if they're conflicting with brick and mortar businesses, I think that is part of our jurisdiction. And I think it, I have a real problem. The question is whether it's conflicting or not. I mean, there's a newsstand right here. How far away would it have to be? Before, it's a few feet. It wouldn't conflict with your. It's a few feet. How many restaurants are side by side by side by side? How many closest restaurants are side by side by side? Intersection. Have you? Can I just ask if you've looked at other locations, or the, or you only looked at this one? Yeah, only. That's not a good. Idea. There's quite a lot of competition there, you know, with the existing store and the one on the other side of the street. Yeah, that's your really decision. That's your decision, of course. I'm not on the market. I beg them up for news. Hello. Hello. Smart. Yeah, I didn't know where. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think we're good now. Um, can you cover that up, please, Sue? Just hit power twice. Thanks. Hit the power button twice. Yeah. All right, folks. We've heard the uh, arguments. You've seen the uh, location. Let's we should just vote. Let's just vote. Okay, all those in favor um, of granting the um, the license, uh, raise your hand. Is it only committee board? Only, only committee board. board. Yes. Only uh, committee members. members. Three. Only committee members. Three. All those opposed. Three. Fail. All those abstaining. Oh no. Uh, one. I don't one. want to be the ten out there. Oh. Um, non committee. Non committee board members. All those in favor. You're, you're not a board member, are you? No, no you still have to be on the board, but not on the committee. So there are 50 on the board, those, um, 10 or so on the committee. Those opposed? Two. Any abstaining? No, that's it. No, Zero. That's it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. So well, let, let, me, let me explain to you how, how this works, okay? Because so, we haven't come across this before. You, you saw that Cynthia's a board member. Yeah. Oh, hi. And she oh, vote. Hi. I didn't know well, you were back Hi. Hi. One of our new members. So she did vote against. Oh, okay. So free. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's three. Let me tell you why this is not the end of the road at all for you. If you will scout the area and, and look for another location, we can have we can inspect it on a timely fashion. You will not lose any time. We could have a pre-meeting before the next full board meeting, so you will have lost no time. Um, Well, the, the, the next full board yeah, meeting, yeah, you, you're yeah. moving because oh, well, oh no, June is normal, right? June is normal. June is normal. 
Right. So it's the first Tuesday in June. Right. So maybe just have the next week or two. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we will make sure we inspect the site. Hang and in there. I have no business. Of course, they could also, you know, go against us if we go forward. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we didn't actually do this. Uh, new business? New business. Okay. Um, Roberta? A few things. Uh, um, at the next full board meeting, at the next transportation committee, uh, the 65th, 66th Street Block Association is going to propose a bike corral in front of Shunli. Uh, DOT has looked at it. Shunli is happy to have it. And um, so they will be coming. And that will really improve Shunli's operations. Yeah. It will improve their operations. It'll improve, it'll improve the yeah, street. So that's not a city bike. That's just a bike. A bike corral. Right. Okay. 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 Um, the other good news is the southwest corner of 96th Street and West End Avenue, you know, that, that, that that's the cool. bad, they, they want to do a, the, Colleen left, but they, they can do a bump out um, there, but the problem is they need someone to, to sign a contract saying that they will keep it clean and, and get rid of snow. The school did not want to do that, but Hilda, um, who's been here before the board, went to her co-op board and her co-op board has agreed to to do to that. maintain that bump out? Uh, Colleen is going to send them the contract. If Once they sign the contract, Great. they can get, That's it's great. a painted, well it's not a, it's going to be a painted bump out, not a. Yeah, but still, yeah. it's great. So, and Roberta, aren't they also? Thank you for everyone oh, supporting Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Plastic bollards. Uh, well, that's that's something DOT will do, but the, we've asked. No, no. Right. We've asked them, and now that we're getting the bump out, I think we can get the bollards and the, the bollards where in the on, 90, on the middle of 96th Street. Um, the other is not final, but I think I've made a contact to get a school crossing sign on in Riverside Center. Oh, that problem area that we talked about. Right. Yeah. And then you want to announce that we're having the joint meeting with um, Parks, with Parks the, third, July, the yeah. third, um, third July, the third Monday in July. That's July 16th. I think so. The 16th. Why are we having training? Is that about the rotunda? Or? It's about the 59th Street um, exit from the from the Riverside Boulevard. Oh, uh, yeah, Riverside Boulevard South. The stage 59th five at 59th Street. Yes. And um, just a quick question: we, we, We're going to move the July third meeting, the the July meeting from July third, which was not a good. Um, and I'm going to send an email out, but we have two possible dates. One is Thursday, July nineteenth, which would normally be the YEL meeting. Um, and I the, can't. Okay. I can't. And the other would be Ju either Wednesday, June twenty seventh, or Thursday, June twenty sixth. Why are we doing it the next Tuesday? Because everyone, when we keep it for Tuesday, instead of doing the second Tuesday in July, why don't we do the third Tuesday in July? Because that would be steering. Is there much of a well, steering yeah. committee? <laughs> we haven't. It's it's. Yeah. Do we have that much that we can't combine to the next month? Well, just, or move it. I guess do July sixteenth. Big steering agenda. We could, that we could dispense with that and or fold it into the full board. Or or have a pre meeting. Okay. All right, let's do. Um, July 16th, uh, 17th. July 17th. That's the third Tuesday. That's the third Tuesday. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That was. Oh, well, wait, wait. <clears throat> if we're meeting on the 16th with Parks, how long a meeting will that be? And can we make <coughs> it? The 15th. I think that's going to be a. No, 16th of July. No, yeah, I think. No, no. The July. 16th of July, people. <coughs> July is the joint meeting. So if we have a joint meeting with parts on the 16th of July, can we then do transportation after that, if we're all here anyway? How long do we need for the 59th I, I think Street? That, that may take a while. Maybe. That may take a while. I think Our we parks, still need transportation. Parks time to go. And parks, <laughs> yeah, parks has parks their parks meeting. Lead. Yeah. Parks, parks may have, meeting. parks will right. have things they um, need. So I think we um, have to keep our, um, all right. So I think we're going to do this, the <coughs> July 17th is going to be the new and that way, if there are any resolutions in July, we can vote on them. July 17th would be full board? Full board, and I'll send an email out tomorrow. So transportation remains on the 10th? Yeah. <coughs> no, July 17th is not full board. July 17th is the transportation plan. 
No, 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 July 10th is transportation. July 16th is com com combined is with parks, and the 17th board. is full board. It sounds like it, because nobody wanted a July 4th, that area of the, the week. Oh. So people are taking that week off. July 3rd would have been our meeting, but it's the day before July 4th. Right. So wouldn't why isn't the the full board meeting July 10th? I don't know the exact Because date. that's transportation. July well, I thought we were moving transportation. transportation. I thought we were pumping transportation. No, we're not. Well, we could do that. We could just move transportation to the 17th yeah. and have full board on the 10th. Yeah. Why wouldn't we do that? Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Well, we if do. Colleen's going to let me know tomorrow whether we need to vote on the 59th Street thing. If we need to vote on the 59th Street thing. Then, then you want to decide right. what the 17th. September, right. Right. So um, right. if not, we'll do it the 10th. I'm, right. I'm happy with Just either day. Okay. Um, any other new business, Roberta? That's all I have, but there may be other. I have a super quick thing. It's more of a comment than a question. Um, I think a lot of people were um, involved or attended or heard in the news about the first day of the PC and the um, organ organized activity from people in the disability community. Um, and a lot of the people from that community were asking sort of um, what the role of Community Board 7 was in um, the changes, what we could do, that whether we were an advocacy, advocacy group to advocate um, on their behalf versus a city agency or part of the city agency that is there to sort of raise awareness but not necessarily be um, an advocacy group. Um, I think it may be worth it for us at some point to put on our agenda having a conversation on the transportation committee about some of those issues, including I just don't feel I feel like they as an as a group don't know where to go. And especially when it comes to the um, elevators in the subways and other things, I think even if it's it, even as an education tool, um, it may be worth it to have somebody from the MTA come and explain to people why the elevators were not included in this, the plans for the BC train, and also what those advocates could potentially do, and just sort of I'm totally kind of on the same them. position they are. Yeah. We were presented a plan as a fait accompli. We had no input into it. Right. And I'd love to know how those things get put together. Yeah, and we right. talked about it. We asked them. Yes. We asked my, them. my only point is, I think if we, we need to do it in a way that's not seen as antagonist, I don't want this to be seen as something where we're taking sides, but rather just like a way to learn about how the process works. Yeah, but, and but so, I think the person that was questioning us wanted us to do something that did. I think they want us to take sides. That, yeah, but I don't, I don't think, I think, I, I, I think I, even I, just having a place for them to well, go. there's no sides yeah. when it comes to us knowing how right. the process exactly. works. There's that's only my, one side That is my that. point. And the side is we should know how it works. And I know these meetings are usually busy, but we're done in an hour and a half tonight, and I think at some at some month it might be worth it in the next few months. Just well, I, I also just wonder, though, if, if the MTA decided to do something without consulting with us and presented it to us as a fait accompli, do we want to have a meeting where people can yell at us for not having done anything. They're not going to yell at us. Right. I think they're going to. I also have another question, and that is, anytime you you renovate something, you're supposed to work with the Americans with Disabilities Act to make things accessible, and they did not do that here. I think what they've done is illegal. It's not a major. It's not a major. I hate to tell you this. It's not really a renovation. Right. It's cosmetic. It's exactly. It's not it's just cosmetic. over a hundred million dollars exactly. of cosmetic. cosmetic. It, but I'm I think sorry. I think we. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I've got to put on my MTA hat for a minute. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us why this isn't a good idea. <laughs> what you're suggesting is not a bad idea okay. at all. Okay. What I'm going to say is why the ESI program is not simply cosmetic. It is fixing stairways, stairway treads, ADA strips on the ends of platforms, lighting, putting in more countdown clocks, including ones at the street, wayfinding signs. Water remediation, uh, water is, is crippling our system. You cannot believe what's behind some of these walls. So to say this is simply cosmetic is not so. The reason elevators were not included in this, besides the funding wasn't included for That's, elevators, think, yeah. is that that comes from a completely different place. The 72nd and 86th Street stations have stacked platforms. I think 110th Street could have taken an maybe elevator very easily. Maybe if we did something, we could get in front of it for the next time. And at least maybe you know, know the process. I, right. I, exactly. I think it's a great idea, and I think that the new president has just taken. I mean, he's yeah. barely been there. I think he's been there as long as the captain. Um, no longer than that. Well, but not much. Give him a couple more months, and maybe in the fall have. He has said he would like to. He's undertaking a study to see what it would take, and if possible, right. to make every one of the 472 
by the end of the year, it'll be 473 when Broadway right. Street comes back stations. Um, ADA accessible. He's looking into a new smaller type of elevator, which while it might not accommodate a wheelchair, would accommodate a walker and somebody with a cane who was who just right. had problems with stairs. He's looking into all of these things. Like yeah, I just think in this neighborhood, it's a mobility mm -hmm. challenge neighborhood to a large degree. It's an aging population here, not just between that and strollers, other things. There are a lot of people who have a hard time getting around and anything we can we do to try to- We would all love to see every station access. I get it. I just think anything- So can maybe in the us. fall, we can yeah. look to see if yeah. there's some sure. kind of plan in place. I have a question. When we say it's a totally different thing, it's a different budget, but someone allocated $100 million for ESI instead of for making these Sorry, stations. <laughs> How did that come about? What's talk the decision process of what money goes to what pocket? To, to just yourself. so you know yeah. that- <laughs> Um, just so you know that there are good things coming. The following stations are being made accessible. Bedford Park Boulevard on the B&D, Gun Hill Road on the 5, 149th Street Grand Concourse on both the 2, 5, and 4 platforms. That's, that station has different levels mm -hmm. in case you... 86th Street in Bay Ridge on the R, yeah. Bedford Avenue on the L when the Canarsie Tube shuts down, Greenpoint Avenue on the G, Eastern Parkway, Brooklyn Museum on the 2, 3, Rockaway Parkway, the terminus of the L, 59th Street, Brooklyn on the N and the R, 1st Avenue, you know, there's going to be a new Avenue A entrance when the Canarsie Tube shuts down, Chambers Street on the Jay-Z, which is a, needs a major renovation and it's wonderful as getting one, Times Square on the shuttle, Astoria Boulevard on the N and W, which is a major connecting point to the M60 bus to LaGuardia, Court Square on the G, a major transfer point for, between the E, M, G, and 7, and Woodhaven Boulevard on the J. And what percent so, of those are in our district? None. None. <laughs> none. But those districts have none, and we have some right now. Okay. Okay. I think we all can agree we'd yeah. like to learn more about the So process. let's just keep it at top yeah. of mind for us okay. for when we talk into it. The interesting yeah. part of the process yeah. is how yeah. stations are selected yeah. okay. to go ahead. That's the interesting part yes. of the process. How do I, uh, Sorry, are you taking anything from? I think so. Oh, sorry. So what, just right now we are. You're out. Yeah, we have new business. Go ahead. Two quick things. Kind of for these gas line replacements. So digging up a, a lot of streets, as you all know, and a lot of them seem to be contiguous, and it's very disruptive. You know, they rip things open and they close them. They come back the next day, or they leave them, and they come back. a lot of noise, a lot of dirt, a lot of loss of parking spaces and all that asphalt all, all over the street getting in people's shoes. So I don't know, maybe there's a reason why they have to do all these streets contiguously at the same time. I don't know. But if not, I wish there somebody could be telling them to give a neighbor to not have such a heavy impact on one neighborhood at the same time, you know, 12 streets at once going every which way. Maybe, maybe they could stagger it, unless there are it's, technical no, reasons you, why they have to do it all. At, trust me, I know this because they dug up everything on West End Avenue. Yeah. Road. They're putting in new gas lines. I know that. And they're putting in new electric cables. And they have to do them contiguously. They can't do them in sections. So they start in one place and they work down. They're starting south and they're working north. So they will finally meet. But they have to do it the way they're doing it. My building talked to them. We all talked to them. Very the interesting. You, make sense. you mentioned the asphalt. A bigger danger is a car coming down the street, hitting one of those things and having it fly into somebody's face. Yeah. All right, well, if they have to do it contiguously, then I'll move on to... I think they could clean up their site yeah. a little better okay. once they leave. Item number two. Yeah, I, I, I've been hearing proposals lately that there should be permitting for parking in neighborhoods. You know, some council members have mentioned... Residential that. parking permits. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, We're I have a have car. have a presentation on that next month, right. hopefully. From I have a car, and I, I've seen cars from new jersey and connecticut and pennsylvania pull into spaces while i'm going around so i can appreciate the value of it but there's a, another element to this which is parking garages are disappearing as you as this block certainly is is a good example i mean we lost we lost two parking garages on this block just recently for, and this is going on all over people are deciding that it's you know, they make more money from a high rise condo than they do operating garages. So if there aren't garages and people can't, are told they can't park in certain neighborhoods because they don't live there, 
I would like to see a suggestion made to the city that they make an effort to take vacant lots where possible and convert them into municipal parking lots at a reasonable price. There are real no, there are, there are no vacant lots in our community. No, vacant you mean that just land? The only, the only. Well, I know there's not a lot of it, but I don't think there's anything. There's no vacant lots. There are no vacant lots in our. The city owned the group of buildings, which they subsidized the rent. So in turn, the rent, the uh, rents for cars much lower. They're all being torn down right now. So I know. I think two, two were torn down on this block. Yeah, I know. They're being torn down everywhere. So torn where? Down so people have to park somewhere. No, they you don't. can't just tell people from. I, I look. I have a car, so I agree with you. It's very difficult, and then you can't tell the right. people from New Jersey. Well, we, we've asked the council member <coughs> who's one of the. Uh, sponsors of the residential parking permit um, and Mar I asked Marissa from Helen's office and they said the uh, bill wasn't ready to bring to us uh, tonight but they <coughs> think that by next month it will be ready and they come back to that discussion that should be very interesting, it should yeah, be very interesting. interesting. the harder it is to park the more people will take public transportation to the city which we see is a good thing at least I see as a good thing well sure. but it isn't, a, it isn't an option for some people um anyone have anything else no, okay I, Ken oh sorry, sorry. and then Nikki no, just one thing, we should adjourn. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I have a free adjournment. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to get on a discussion maybe for June, um, talking about daylighting in the district. Um, that's a really painless way that we can make our streets safer. Um, a lot of jurisdictions mandate it, and New York City got an exemption um, because of parking probably. But, uh, you know, I, I would like to see us entertain a resolution to have every feasible intersection in the day, day for safety. For safety. Okay. Could we could we could put it on our next transportation committee yeah. agenda? It would be is interesting there... to know what's what's more safety effective, right. neck downs or daylighting. Is there an expert? We, we may, well, we have a whole month to do it. Ken, yeah. I don't know if this would dovetail with what you're proposing or not, so I don't want to pile on it's not useful. Um, but what I think of when I hear what you're talking about about daylight is um, turn lanes as well. Yeah. Um, because in my way of looking at it, the ideal way to daylight a uh, corner is to make a turn lane out of it so that the car that's turning is out of the demands of through traffic and has only one place to look, and that would be the side, the crosswalk that they are about to drive through. And by making a turn lane, you automatically daylight a portion of that corner so that each of the pedestrian and the driver can see each other. So I don't know if that dovetails. I'd like to take it up at some time, but I don't want to pile well, on you. I, I this think gentleman will tell you that um, the best laid plans sometimes don't work out that way because we have put some turn lanes in and there is the, there is standing cars are standing whether they're uh for higher vehicles or whatever are standing and blocking. Are standing in the turn lane yes. but, but i think we need more i think there more should be turns. a discussion <laughs> like discussing this now right where we yeah. don't know what we're talking it'll about it'll be on the agenda for next time everyone learn as much as possible well let's see if we can get some, learn to the some, meeting. some experts on this do i have a motion to, to adjourn I, I yes you do Vicky has one. Else, meeting adjourned meeting